Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Tina Dadu, and I head the Department of Hematology at BLK Max Super Speciality Hospital. Today, I'll be talking about the hematological parameters in dengue. So, the first question I'm sure that you would want to ask me is that why dengue? Everybody is talking about COVID all the time. There is COVID all around. So, why dengue? So, I just thought that you know, dengue has given a lot of importance to the hematologist, unlike COVID, probably, and and it is a low platelet count in dengue that actually makes us what we are. So uh, I thought that I should keep my loyalty towards dengue. And since everybody has spoken about COVID, so I'll continue with dengue. Now in dengue, actually, it is a low platelet count, which is of major concern and which causes a lot of panic in the minds of the patient. And we have been really working hard on to predicting the platelet recovery. So in the past, actually, we have discussed a lot about the immature platelet fraction formerly known as the IPA factor, and also about the HFC, which is the high fluorescent cells. So today's uh, basically agenda is to sort of give a small recap of the IPA and HFC, and also to correlate the two parameters and how do they help in the recovery of platelets and do they have a correlation or not. And other than this, we also thought that we should have a look at the other hematology parameters, basically the platelet parameters, which might help in the recovery of, which might help in predicting the recovery of the platelets. And these include the mean platelet volume, the PDW, the platelet operit, the platelet large cell count, and the platelet large cell ratio. So we'll go through all these parameters one by one and we will see if any of these parameters also help us in predicting the recovery of the platelets or they don't. Uh, so let's begin with the first factor, just a small recap of IPF, which is an immature platelet fraction, which is an index of thrombophoresis. So in dengue, the platelet counts go down and the primary reason for that is platelet destruction and also suppression of the megatheriocytes which produce the platelets. Now once the defending, once this factor is removed or this offending factor is removed, the platelets start begin to recover. So the first indicator of the recovery is indicated by the immature platelet fraction as this component can be analyzed in the peripheral blood. So we see that there is an increase in the IPF and we know that the platelets will start recovering. Uh, this is a plot which shows, um, the x-axis shows the number of days. The y-axis shows the platelets on the left-hand side and IPF on the right-hand side. So as we see on day one, the, plate, the day one of admission, so the platelets were 89,000, they went down to 54,000, further dropped to 39,000, which was the lowest. After that, they started recovering on day four, that is, they started increasing. Now, if we look at the IPF at the same time, on day one of admission of the patient, the IPF was 7.8. At this point, we don't understand or we didn't know whether the, plate, the IPF will go up on the next day, it will remain the same or it will go down. So the next day we see that there is the IPF has gone up to 11.2%. So there was an increase from 7.8 to 11.2, which clearly indicates there was an increasing trend of this IPF. So if on day two, you know that your IPF is showing you an increasing trend, and then we correlate it to the day of recovery, which was day four, where we saw that the platelets have started recovering. That means there's a two day gap. So we analyzed all our dengue cases and we figured out that 93.7% of the cases show a recovery within 24 to 48 hours from the rising trend. So this was a beautiful parameter which indicates that I increase in the IPF will help to reduce the panic in the minds of the patient as they would know that within 48 hours, their platelets will start recovering. But you know, there is a problem with the IPF. It comes with an extra cost. And in a country like ours, where economics and the economical factors are play a major role, it actually, if it can be replaced by something else, it's going to be always better. So IPF is not a part of CPC. So we looked at other parameters, which actually may be surrogate for IPF, and therefore they might be helpful in predicting the platelet recovery. So we looked at other factors. And one of the factors which we have earlier discussed also is the HFC, which is a high fluorescent cell. Now this was the new kid on the blog and trying to rock and roll, but then came COVID and all the limelight which this poor guy deserved, he did not get it. But anyways, we'll just take the focus back to him and see what it offers. So uh, this is a scatter plot from the mind ray, 
machine that we run the samples on. And we see that the x-axis is showing us the side scatter and the y-axis is showing us the fluorescence. We can clearly see the lymphoid population here, which is actually the smaller cells with a low fluorescence. And there is another population here, which is the high fluorescence lymphoid cells. And these actually high fluorescent lymphoid cells is the thing that we are now going to concentrate on because this is the population of this activated lymphoid cells, which is the combination of the B and the T lymphoid cells. Um, so we actually plotted a graph where we on the x-axis shows the day of admission of the patient and the y-axis is showing us the platelets, which is indicated in red here. So let us have a look. Day one of admission, the patient's platelet count was 1,30,000. Drop down to 50,000, then to 29, 15, and then 13. And day five was the day when it showed recovery. Sorry, this is the day six. So day six is the day when the platelets had started recovering from 30, they went to 30. Then after that, it just increased to 62, then to 79, and then 142, and kind of patient completely recovered. So this was the trend that happened with the platelets. Now, what happened to the HFCs? The HFC on day one of admission was 0.4% of the total lymphoid cells, increased to 0 0.5, 0 0.9, and then there was a sharp and sudden gain in the HFC, which went up to 4.1%. So there was a HFC jump, so that we call it. And then after that, it increased further, reached a peak of 13.5%, and after that, it gradually dropped, started dropping again. So if we see this day, day three of admission, from when the, the HFC increased to 4.1%, so this is the day, day four, where we figured that there was an increase in the HFC, significant increase in the HFC. And if we compare this day to the day of platelet recovery, again, there's a gap of two days, that is 20, 48 hours. So again, we went back to our data and we analyzed our entire data and we realized that 23% of the patients recovered within 24 hours and rest of the 65 within 48 hours and rest of the patients within the next 72 hours. So 90% of the patients did show a recovery within 48 hours of the HFC jump, which was again very similar to what we saw in the IPL. So if I actually put the two graphs together, I clearly see here that this is the platelet versus the HFC graph, and this is the platelet versus the IPL graph. So we see here the platelets drop, they reach a low point, and after which they started increasing. Similar thing happened here also. The next thing that we see here is HFC started rising. There was a sharp increase after which it increased and had a peak, after which it started coming down. A similar thing happened in IPF as well, that it started going up reached a peak and started going down. So if you see both the pictures, they are very identical to each other. And thus we felt that HFC can be used as a surrogate marker for IPF. And thus we can predict the increase in the platelets in the denticulations using HFC. In fact, we felt that HFC is even a better parameter than IPF because it doesn't just help us in predicting the recovery of the platelets, but it also helps in the diagnosis of dengue. So we found that if the HFC percentage is more than 5% and the patient is having thrombocytopenia during times when dengue is prevalent, it is very diagnostic of dengue. We don't even have to get a dengue test done. And a lot of times we find that with all the three parameters and if the patient is on day five or day six, whereas NS1 is not positive and his IgM have also not started coming up, the patient may be falsely negative by, by the antigen antibody test. But this is a strong sign that the patient has it. But at the same time, uh, we just thought that uh, we should also have a look at the other parameters, which are the MPV, the platelet to grit, PLCC, and platelet large cell ratio. Do these parameters do they have any significance in predicting the uh, in predicting the recovery of platelets or not? So just let's go to them one by one. So platelet to grit is basically the volume which is occupied by the platelets in the blood. So it's very obvious when the platelet go down, the platelet to grit will also go down. So if you see the blue line is actually the platelet count and the green line is the platelet to grit. So it's very obvious that they will parallel each other and thus platelet to grit in no way is going to help in predicting the count of their platelets. So let's go to the next parameter which is called the platelet large cell count. 
Now, platelet large cell count is basically the number of the platelets, the large component of the platelets, the larger size platelets. So in dengue, we expect that when the IPF starts increasing, the as the IPFs are larger in size, we expect that the large cell count will also increase. But remember one thing that this is what we're talking about is the platelet large cell count. So it is the absolute count that we're talking about. So this absolute count also parallels the platelet count as a result of which this is also not helpful in predicting the platelet recovery. So then we thought that probably PLCR, which is also called as a platelet large cell ratio might be something which would be of some use. So the platelet large cell ratio is actually the percentage of the larger platelets which are present in the blood. So basically the plate, large platelets divided by the platelets is what we get. So the platelet large cell ratio is the one that we are trying to figure out that might be helping helpful to us in, in predicting the recovery of the platelets. So when we saw the graph and we saw this and we got very excited, we saw that it, this is kind of exactly similar to what we are getting in HFC and in IPF. We see that the platelets are dropping and at the same time we see that this PLCR, that is the platelet large cell ratio, has gone up, increasing trend. And this increase in the trend is again predicting the recovery of the platelets. And again, after that, there's an increase and increase. So we got very excited. But unfortunately, we found this pattern only in 35% of the cases. That means that the rest of the 65% of the cases did, were not really helpful. I really do not know the reason for this because we expected that this should kind of mimic the IPF and it should be paralleling the IPF. Probably we have to do more studies and we have to do more number of cases to figure out what is the problem. But in the 35% of the cases where this pattern was maintained, 90% of these 35% cases showed a recovery within 48 hours. So again, very similar to IPF, but we just saw this pattern in 35% of the cases. The rest of the cases, you would ask, me how was the pattern in rest of the cases we saw this zigzag pattern on the on the blocks like the plcr increased then it decreased then it increased and it decreased so it was not giving us a very robust pattern where we were sure of actually using this parameter as the predictor so maybe this has to be made a little robust i don't know but maybe a lot more work needs to be done on this from our side so we went to the next the next parameter which was called the mean platelet volume that is the mpv so again, the mean platelet volume is the average volume of the platelets. So it is that, again, a very similar pattern that we saw in the PLCR or in fact the IPF. So again, we were very excited because the platelets were dropping and uh, we saw that the MPV was increasing. This was probably was expected also because increase in the MPV is basically reflecting the increase in the IPF because you have a larger platelet, you have increased in the IPF. So we saw the same thing here, increase in the uh, MPV, and this was exactly very similar to what we got in the PLCR. But just the same way as in the PLCR, we found this only in 35% of the cases, and we did not, in the rest of the 65% of the cases, was exactly similar. That is the zigzag pattern that we got on, on the PLCC. So again, probably the larger MP, the larger platelets, which was showing the high MPV, were the ones which were being calculated as the higher PLCR, as a result of which both the patterns were very similar to each other. And in both MPV and the PLCR showed this pattern. And third, so most of the cases showed a good pattern in 35% of the cases. And the rest of the 65% cases showed this kind of a zigzag pattern, which we again don't understand because we expected it to mimic the IPL. So anyhow, data is data and the negative correlations, the positive correlations actually don't eventually do matter actually, but still the negative also have the same value. So this was a, so this was another plot which again showed us a very zigzag pattern and we were very disappointed looking at this because the platelets clearly showed a beautiful fall and then there was a rise and there was a rise after that. But the MPV did not help in predicting the platelets. So I really don't know whether MPV and PLCR have that kind of a value in dengue or they don't as HFC and IPF have. So if I have to conclude my presentation based on all these factors, I would say that MPV and PLCR definitely have some potential and maybe a lot more work needs to be done on that to figure out what it is actually. 
but PLCs and platelet trip for sure are not useful in predicting the path, predicting the recovery of platelets because they are actually paralleling the platelet count. So if I have to conclude the whole thing, like including our previous parameters of IPF and HCF, I would say HFC and IPF both are um, excellent markers in predicting the recovery of the platelets. And, but HFC is a parameter which also helps in diagnosing uh, dengue in thrombocytopic patients. Secondly, it helps to predict the recovery just the same way as IPF does. Thirdly, and the most important actually is it doesn't come, it doesn't have to, you don't have to pay anything extra for getting this HFC count. So every time you're running a CBC on an analyzer, which is using fluorescence based differentials, you do not need anything extra. And just the same instrument is going to give you a very robust HFC value at no extra cost. And last but not the least, it is not impacted at all by the blood transfusions. Whereas in patients who in which you're going to run the IPF, the transfusions may actually suppress the IPF, but it does not impact the WBC component at all. The platelet transfusions are totally no impact on the WBC. So we can use HFC parameters in the patients who have been transfused also. So hands down, I must say that, of course, I don't have to mention the winner is the high fluorescent cells the HFC. So after comparing all the markers, which was the IPF and the HFC and all the new platelet parameters, we figured out that HFC is one of the best markers, the cheapest marker to predict the recovery of platelets in patients with damage. With this, I would like to now end my presentation and would thank you all for a very patient. Day.